What's really the problem with big girls? Most guys aren't attracted to them. Okay, but there are a lot of guys that are attracted right. to Right, most of them in the lower income and lower educational levels. Well, you know, the guys that I have been with, long money, they education, l- and everything. Really? Yes. Well, uh, funny, uh, they certainly aren't seen in public with you. Seen with public, everything. We go to the money. Because I never see rich, successful guys in public with big, fat girls. Never. Why not? Why not? It doesn't matter why not. I just don't. Why do we have to be big, fat girls? Why we just can't be big, bone? Why we not? Because be you're not big, bone. Girl. Your bones are normal size. It's the fact. It's not the fact. Of course it is. You know, and me, I don't have a problem with myself, and the guys that I date don't have a problem with me. Well, why is it women in other countries don't have such big bones? I don't know. Maybe because they don't eat. Because it has nothing bones. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. But your bones don't, by the way, when you eat, wait, wait, stop right there. Stop right there. I'm not going to yell over you. Your bones do not get bigger when you eat. Do you understand? So that that was a problem because he won and not because he's a big girl? So if it was a skinny girl, it would have been okay. No, that's not what we said. The best actress, or the best supporting actress in her case, uh, should be the person who did the best job acting. No, what I'm saying is that there are people who are trying to say that Jennifer Hudson winning an Oscar somehow means we are celebrating fat women, which we well, are not. You're celebrating fat women? And then it's got the whole topic about fat women. The girl saying, well, I don't want to see her role shape. Well, don't look. Don't look. You know, I understand there's certain things that big women can wear, certain things that we cannot wear. Yeah, some, somewhere we got to draw the line. Why? You know. But, I mean, if you're all that, come on. I, I want to see you in a thong bikini. Let's go. I'm about to put a string in my ass. From the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. It's the, the, the Tom Likey Show. <laughs> you know. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likes. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likes Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the Radio Talk Show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with a fantastic story out of Forbes magazine. This is fantastic. Here it is. Wealth has many perks. Don't I know it? Great vacations, beautiful houses, nice cars... But if it's marital bliss you're looking for, don't expect money to help. Almost half of America's rich say they're unhappy in marriage. This according to a study. What's worse says here, more than that say they've been unfaithful in the last three years. More than half. And get this. Of those confessing to an affair, more were women, 61%, than men, 43%. The reasons cited most frequently by both sexes, not what you expect. You know what the reason is? Variety. This according to Prince and Associates, a Connecticut firm that tracks the habits of the rich. They asked 433 breadwinners, 56% male, 44% female, 
with a net worth of over $1 million about their relationships. 38% of the participants had a net worth of $10 million or more. It says here it's probably not a surprise that 30% of Prince's survey group said they were considering a divorce. Most men responding to the Prince and Associates survey, 75%, said cost is their main obstacle to getting a divorce, and 61.5% said they feared it would hurt business dealings and opportunities. <laughs> Just 7.7% .7 of men cited harm to the kids. You see, the dirty little secret that many men will never admit to because it is so horrific, so awful, it would curl everybody's hair at the same time. And it's really horrible. I do believe that most men who have kids believe that's the price of admission, to have security, to have marriage, to have somebody stay with you. Women want kids, and we got to give them what they want. That's why only 7.7% .7 of men cited harm to the kids as a reason not to get a divorce. I don't think most men care that much. I hate to say it. No, I love to say it. Ah! The story continues. It says here, Raul Felder, the celebrity divorce attorney, says this makes a lot of sense, particularly if you have a lot of money and a lot to lose. For starters, there's this whole thing about equitable division of the assets. Equitable. I put that in quotes, even though Forbes didn't. And in many marriages, the assets were accumulated after the I do's were said, making them fair game to be divvied up. Felder says divorce itself is a businessman's biggest deal, the biggest deal he'll ever do. He's going to lose half of what he has. But financially independent women were no less practical in their answers. The biggest obstacle cited was interference with business dealings, 51%. Followed by cost, 42.8%. And even with women, these are rich women now, just 14% said they feared divorce because it would hurt the kids. It says here that men and those with assets of more than $10 million dollars were more inclined to say marriage had hindered their financial success. I'm going to repeat that, boys. These are people who are rich. Like I'm rich, okay? Men and those with assets of more than $10 million were more inclined to say marriage had hindered their financial success. When I tell you women are dream killers, this is what I'm talking about. It says here, 53% of men said so as opposed to 41% of women. 53% of the men surveyed. 53%. Once again, empirical evidence of what I've been telling you. It's one thing to hear it from me. This is a survey of hundreds of rich people. And 53% of the men said that marriage had hindered their financial success, as opposed to 41% of women. By the way, 75% of those, whether they were men or women, who had more than $10 million was agreed, as opposed to 30.6% of those with less than $10 million of assets. By the way, you may not be surprised to know That according to this story in Forbes, it seems like many people plan for eventual separation. About 56% of the women in this survey said they had hidden or protected assets, while 36% of the men said they had done so. Those with more than $10 million were more than three times as likely to have hidden or protected assets. It's that 10 million mark, apparently. Wow. 
It goes on to say in the piece, what's telling is the low number of survey respondents, even among the very rich who said they had prenuptial agreements in place. Just 5.8% for the survey as a whole and 11% for those with more than $10 million of assets. Post-nuptial agreements were only slightly more common, 8.3% for the survey as a whole. And most of those were in the $10 million plus camp. We've talked about post-nuptial agreements on the air. It says here that more of those respondents, the ones in the $10 million plus camp, were unhappy in marriage. This goes back to something I have said to you on the air many, many times, and I know you don't want to hear it. I know you don't want to hear it. Especially if you're in the sub $1 million club, like most people are. I've said many times, marriage is for poor people. Marriage is for the losers, the unsuccessful. The kind of people who get married because the rent would be cheaper. Or because they think they'd be splitting expenses. I mean, marriage is no more than than like a roommate finding service that you would see on the internet or pick up one of those little circulars around town. Like we have that rent times around LA, you know. I mean it's 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 like you you need a roommate to cut costs. So you marry somebody and in addition to cutting costs, you at least at the beginning have sex with them. Then the price of admission is having children with them. The rich want variety, and the rich can afford it. I've said this repeatedly. Marriage is for poor people. The first time I got married, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. The second time I got married, my net worth was under $80,000. The third time I got married, it wasn't much better. And the fourth time I got married, well, let's just say that my net worth is twenty, thirty times what it was the fourth time I got married. And now marriage doesn't look very appealing to me anymore. It doesn't look appealing to me because I don't need to cut costs. I don't need to split expenses. I can do this all by myself. And yes, I have found women in marriages to be a hindrance to the career. Yes, I have. Now, I, I maybe men are a hindrance to women's careers. I don't know. I've, I've never dated a man or married one. But speaking as a man, I have found that women can get in the way. They can be passive-aggressive. They can be very annoyed at the times you need to have your boss over or you need to uh, have a client dinner or a client lunch. They can complain and demand that you curtail your schedule or just complain in general. Raising the stress level. Making it harder to deal with going into work and working every day. That's why I'm unmarried today. I'm unmarried today because I don't need marriage. I don't need somebody to split the expenses with. I don't need that. Isn't it interesting, as people move up the financial scale, marriage is more of a hindrance to business. People want more variety because they can afford it. And the reality is people just keep getting married stupidly. When in reality, the only people who should be getting married are people poor enough that they need a roommate to split the expenses with. I I really think that's the way. Well, certainly for men. Don't these numbers tell you something? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. My husband told me that as long as I use protection, and I do tell him that I can sleep with anybody I want to. What time uh, can I come over? I'm on my way home now. You can meet me there. Excellent. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show, 
800 500 Tom is our telephone number. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, what's going on, Father? Not much. Do a little radio program here. And you are doing a fine job at it, sir. Let me tell you what. Why, thank you. I uh, I moved down to Los Angeles three years ago. I actually got uh, turned on to your show uh, by a girl by down here and uh, started uh, listening religiously. I listen to what you say, and uh, I soak it all up, and I can't help but preach it to my friends. And it kind of jades my view towards my core group of friends. I've started reevaluating who my core friends are and what they stand for and their reasons for being in relationships and their reasons for getting married. And uh, I think you're 100% right. I uh, have uh, dismissed some of my friends because personally I think they're pussies. Uh, they're getting pussy whipped and they're just quitting. I, I totally agree with that. And, uh, you know, the fact is that uh, a lot of times when people get married, they get into relationships, uh, they bounce all their unmarried friends anyway. So a lot of these guys you're being friendly with, they, they've just bolted. Yeah, they get, uh, you know, their, their wives don't want them hanging around me because they know I go out. They know I pull chicks. They know that uh, if they let their husbands go out with me, that more more times than not, if I'm pulling up chicks, there's going to be another girl with her. And, you know, I'm going to get my buddy to hook up with her, not, you know, force him or anything. But, you know how it goes. You bring a wingman out and, you know, he gets some, too. So uh, they don't they don't like me very much. So it's time that. I start evaluating what's going on with my life and who my true friends are because I'm going to be there for people who are like me and who believe in what I believe in and what I think. And uh, so I just think a lot of men out there need to, you know, listen to you more religiously and listen to what the callers have to say. I listen to, uh, to you religiously, like I said, and I think uh, when I talk about you to some people, they don't like you in general, and I could see why. I really like you, but I like to listen to what the callers have to say because I believe there's a lot to learn from other people's mistakes. Oh, oh I think that's true. I think there is a lot to learn, and uh, you hear the people who make these mistakes all the time. Here, oh, in fact, I'm going to stay on the line, David. Let's bring uh, one of these people on right now. At least he doesn't know he's making a mistake, but let's bring him on and uh, let's see what he has to say. Uh, Tim? That's my name. You disagree with both me and David. Tell us why. You guys, I mean, come on, man. Marriage is, is in, in its truest form, is not a financial financial institution. It's an emotional and a spiritual event. And I, I mean, finances may become involved, but it has, but is not the primary. Uh, it's not what marriage is about. Marriage is about finding someone that you want to spend your life with, and doing that. And I mean, Tom, to be honest with you, man. I don't know who in the right mind would take marriage advice from you when you've been through four already. I'm not giving marriage advice. I'm giving not getting married advice. I'm telling people don't get married. Tom is giving business advice. And when you get married, Tim, it's a merging of two corporations. Now, if you merge with a nonprofit organization, what are you doing? You're paying her half. You're paying for everything. Tim, you sound would, like a pussy. How old I are you? I would pay her 100% because she means that much to me. Tim, you're a pussy. How old are you? I'm 22. Yeah, Tim, you don't know you don't know S, all right? You're 22. You got a girlfriend, right. Tim? I'm a, I have a fiance. I'm getting married. You're a pussy. All right. Hey, thanks for your thanks for your advice, man. Yeah, um, get off the phone, Tim. All right, you're probably <laughs> the last person I'd be taking advice from, anyhow. Oh well, Tim, you're, you're just gonna find out the hard way down the road. You're 22. You're too young to know any better. Do you have a prenup? Of course you don't, because you're in love. This is the love that's going to last a lifetime, Tim. This is a love that, that will outdo any other love. Because people just don't get it. They don't understand that you and your fiancé cared so deeply meow, meow, about meow, each meow, other. Meow, 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 and and meow. The, the fact You're is wrong. that... You're absolutely wrong. People, oh. people do understand. And I take advice from really? people who do understand. You, on the other hand, don't understand. I take advice from people who tell me there will be hard times. There will be financial difficulties, but real love is sticking through that. Oh, yes, and you have real love as opposed to the 50% or so of people who end up getting divorced. That They were not really in love, but you, at 22, you already know what real love is. You know more than all the people who are older than you, have more experience than you, because you are truly in love in a way that people just cannot comprehend. Isn't that right? 
you know what? Maybe I'm not, but guess what? I'm willing to learn with her by my side. Oh, so now you're ready to learn. So in other words, you admit you don't know what you're doing, but you're going to do it anyway. That's like saying, you know what? When I was 12, that's like saying, I'm going to drive a fire truck, and I'm going to learn as I drive. And then eventually you crash into some cars or you overturn the thing. But at least you were learning while you were driving. And that's that's what you're going to do, right? You know what? That's, that's a ridiculous analogy. There's that How so? That's, that's a ridiculous live? analogy. How so? Because because it's like a four-year-old driving a fire truck that makes no sense. Because I've gone I've gone through enough training. I've talked to enough people sure to know not, not nothing. You know what I'm doing. But, I, I'm not saying I necessarily know 100% what I'm doing, but I'm saying that... You don't know 10% what you're doing. You don't know 100%. I, maybe I don't, but that's okay. That's what, that's what it's that's about. That's what love is all about. Doing things when you don't know what you're doing. Signing a contract to agree to give away half of everything you've ever earned if things don't work out. And almost 50% of these marriages don't work out. But what do you care? You're driving towards that brick wall. You've got your foot on the gas, and nobody's going to stop you. Right, Tim? Nobody except for her and myself. Yes. Why should, why should we let anybody else? Should I let you stop me? I don't really care what you do. I, I can't wait till you crash and burn, which you're going to. Okay, hey, thanks. thanks because for you advice, are man. really arrogant, and you're going to find out the hard way. This has not, nothing to do with arrogance. I'm, being, I'm trying to be as humble as I can be. I'm telling you, I don't have the answers. I don't have it all planned out, but I am willing to go the long haul. Why not Why not wait it. until you are more mature, till you're older, till you... Well, uh, according to you, it doesn't matter if I wait until... Well, I'm put it this way, if you're going to do it, you should certainly have your career together. And don't tell me you're the head salesman, you know, Orkin exterminating or something like that. If you have a career and you're working towards it, getting married, the rich people who are, are, are married, they told you. They told you that marriage is a hindrance to success. They told you I don't you care. That. I, what, you don't my care. My life is not at all a dollar, a dollar sign. It's really not. My life is about things that, that hopefully will last longer than a dollar bill. Really? So what do you do for a living, Tim? What's that? What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a student right now. You're a student. What are you studying, son? I'm studying ministry. You're studying ministry? That's correct. So, in other words, this is all about religion. That's what this is all about. No, not really. So, I you mean, don't really care if you ever make a living doing anything? Well, I, I have a faith in that I will be provided for in one means or another. Right. So, in other words, you have no game plan at all to make money or... Absolutely uh, incorrect. Well, what Absolutely. is your? How are you going to make money from the collection plates? Well, on, uh, uh, in addition to studying ministry, I'm also studying the social sciences so I, so I can become a teacher, which doesn't make a lot of money. That's but right. Live off of. That's right. But don't worry. When things don't work out, you'll take half of whatever little you have. Okay. Well, that you you're out of your mind, dude. Oh yeah, I'm out of my mind. Hang on a second, Tim Bryan. What did you want to say to Tim? Tim, you're 22 and about to get married. Yeah. Okay. Well. I'm going to tell you right now, I got married at 18, and it's probably the stupidest thing you can do. All right, well, yeah, it's stupid because yours didn't work out. No, I, who says it didn't work out? I'm still married. That's not the point. The point is, you need to go after your dreams, accomplish them, and then when you're old enough to realize what being married is all about and the responsibility it carries, that's when you decide to do it, not before you get your career you know, on the right track, not before you've experienced all kinds of other things. You know, you're in love, and that's great, but getting married with the first piece of ass you get is not the way to go. You well, can listen to Tom. Okay. I hear Tom's you guys saying... About, about how to be married. Tom's preaching about how to get your things done so that you can later on earn what you want, do what you want, and then getting married is in the cards for you, great. And if not, you're still going to have a successful life and enjoy what you have. Getting married at 22, you've experienced nothing. And I'm not that much older than you, but I've gone through all this crap already. It's more of a headache than you can imagine. So all I'm going to say to you is, if you're not going to take Tom's advice, talk to other people that have gotten married young. What do they say? What do you hey, say? Hey, bro, like... My, my parents were married when they were 18 and 19. They've been married for over 30 years. And that's the point. 30 years ago, people stayed married, and now they don't. Well, I don't, why, why should I have to live by today's standards? I'll go back to Because most I people do. And if you don't, your girlfriend will. Oh, you're, I, I'm you're a moron. On the same page as far oh, as I'm, I'm a moron. Everything. I'm a moron, yes. 
Yes, I'm the one with the experience and you're not, and I'm the moron. Well, that's what I call arrogance, son, and you're going to find out the hard way. You are going to find out the hard way. She is going to kick your ass, and you're going to pay for it. So enjoy being in love, son. That's wonderful. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Excuse me while I scratch my balls. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show at 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about a piece in Forbes magazine called The Rich and Unfaithful. That tells us about a study that was done of people with high net worth. 433 people with at least $1 million. 38% of them had more than $10 million. And they were asked a bunch of questions about marriage and how happy they are. Guess what? They're not that happy. And um, many of the people uh, said that marriage was a hindrance to their financial success. 53% of the men with assets more than $10 million said marriage had hindered their financial success. <laughs> Robert on the Tom Likas Show, hello. How are you doing there, Tom? Great. Yeah, I was next to your show. I don't catch you too much, but once in a while I like to listen to some pretty crazy dudes on the radio, and I guess you're one of them. But um, my thing was, you said people that got married were either poor or stupid. No, I, 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 I said that's the only people who, who should get married are people who are poor or stupid. Okay, well, the poor, I understand that. I mean, plenty. But by the way, plenty of rich people get married. That's why they had this survey. This was a survey of married people with high net worth. I hear you. I hear you. But I mean, if being stupid is having three beautiful children, beautiful wife, I have bills up the ass, yeah, that I deal with on a daily basis. That that's the beauty of it is having those. That's the beauty of it, having bills yeah, the up the ass. Is, the beauty is the struggle of life. Is just struggling. What is so beautiful about that? It, it's beautiful that I have to wake up and there's always something for me to do the next day. Isn't that wonderful? You know, well, you know, I my dad, my dad. Like, you know what? You know what? I, I'm t I'm speaking from experience <laughs> on this. You know, my father. I uh, had that same beautiful life of never, ever having the bills paid, uh -huh. always being broke, always being poor. Uh -huh. Until he was about 61 years old and he had colon cancer. And it turned out that uh, his uh, insurance ran out. Uh, he used about a million dollars in insurance on surgery and chemotherapy and radiation uh -huh. treatments and what have you. you. And, and there he was being treated for cancer. While he had to take a job at a liquor store to, to make ends meet in his 60s. So he would uh, watch the register, and then if nobody was there, he'd run upstairs to throw up from the chemo. So this wonderful life you're living only works as long as you don't have a calamitous situation, like you get really sick or you get hit by a bus, and yeah, then yeah. and then you're really going to pay for all this beauty. But now, this is the thing. It just, it's just the way you put marriage down. I mean, it just... If I didn't get married, doesn't mean I was going to become a rich man. Not every person. No one said that. That's but that's my point. My point is, uh, if you're not planning on being successful, I, I, I guess marriage might be right for you. Uh, but if you're planning on being successful, but it doesn't work out for everybody in those terms. But the thing is, there's nothing more rich or more beautiful than marriage or having children. Waking up Saturday morning and having your children jump in your bed. And I, it, it just that's the beauty of it. Well, now you put marriage down. You, but the point is, you don't have to get married. You don't have to get married. You don't have to get married to have that. <laughs> and just keep raising our children without their father and their mother in the same home. Well, actually, uh, many people do that. Exactly. That's why. Society also, is the also, way it by is. the way, you could if you if you Broken had to, families. if that's you had to, if you is. had to, you could live with uh, with your uh, wife without being married, and therefore not be uh, financially liable uh, down the line if things don't work out. Mm. All right, just test drive it, and there you go. Test drive a family, a wife, kids, and then if you don't like it, hey, take off. I'd rather lease than buy. That's right. So, do you have children, Tom? Nope. 
Thank God, brother. By design. Thank God there's only one of you on the face of the earth. By train. design. That's don't worry. Don't worry. I've got a nephew. <laughs> I've got a nephew. My brother's I'm son. Sure that was my brother's design. son is my you? spinning image. And you know what? He'll inherit the throne one day. I'm telling I'm you right now. For, I'm sorry for his family, brother. Don't worry. Everything will continue. Hey, you have a nice day. You too. There he goes. Another guy. Oh, yeah. It's the beauty part. The beauty part is having all those bills that I never pay. That's beautiful. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello, hello, father. Hello, son. How the heck are you? Doing great. I just wanted to comment. I'm. Uh, I'll be twenty five uh, next week. I got married. Uh, I got married at twenty one. I'm a. I'm a professional poker player now, and uh, being married was, honest to God, probably the worst thing in the world. It was really a hindrance. On myself emotionally and myself financially. Like talk, like I'm a I play cash games, so I don't I don't play tournaments, so I don't have uh, you know the government regulating how much I'm making. But this broad went to the extent to subpoena my deposit records at the casino, and she just destroyed me. <laughs> just destroyed me. Uh huh. And you know, I'll, I'll admit, I was a pussy. I would, I, I'm not afraid to admit that. I did not listen to you. I wish I listened to you four years ago. I wish. It was just, it was a catastrophe. It was really a catastrophe. And I just wanted to let you know, I totally agree with what you're saying. I love your show. And those, oh, those last two callers, well, a bunch of pussies. Give them a Vicodin. <laughs> well, of Blow course, me up, Tom. They're, Blow me up. they're married. They have to defend it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Connor on the Tom Likas show. Hey, how are you, Tom? Great. Um, I am not married, and I'm here to defend marriage. Not necessarily defend it in the way that you think I'm going to defend it. I want to say you you talk about it like it's a bad thing. Period. It's, if you're successful, it's bad. If it's the only way it's good is if you're unsuccessful and poor. And I, I was listening to your little – well, first off, let me say this. I, I think your, a lot of your opinions are disgusting. I don't agree with a lot of them. But at the same time, you back them with evidence. You back them with, you know, uh, experience. And I respect you for that. So uh, I do listen to your show. I listen to it almost every day. Um, but this evidence that you brought forth, this 53% of men saying that marriage was a hindrance or whatever. Well, you know, I, I see, again, you're misquoting what I said. It's 53% of men with net worths over $10 million. Okay, and that's, but what I'm saying is that's 53%. There's still another 47%. That's half and half. Well, we don't, no, but we don't know that it's half and half. I don't know if some of them said, I don't know, or I don't have an opinion. I don't know. I just know the number who said, uh, by the way, that's more than half. More than half of the men surveyed said that women were a financial hindrance to their success. But, you know, that, that, saying that money is the only important thing in, in you know, someone's life, if, and if that's the way it is, then sure, you know, then, yeah, 4 to 53% of men would say it's that. It's not the only thing. It's just a very important thing. I agree. But at the same time, you know, you've got, like, that one last guy was saying, you know, kids, and I'm not saying kids aren't expensive. I'm not saying a wife isn't expensive. But, you know, the, the love that comes with it, the partnership, the, I mean, as long as you find someone you like, don't, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of crazy... You can have a relationship without getting married. Right. But, you know, what What if you want to stay with that one person for the rest of your life? You can you do know, that why? without signing a contract. Then why not sign a prenup? And then you got every problem solved. Well, you could sign a prenup, but you don't have a problem solved because uh, you still have to agree to give up a certain amount of your wealth when you split up. All right. The point, the point I was trying to make is just you, you, talk, you talk in absolutes a lot. And, I mean, I'm sure you're willing to admit that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some things are absolutely wrong. So marriage is always absolutely wrong. For men. <laughs> for so men. Wrong, it's not period. wrong for women, and I do think there's a benefit for children, but not for men. Now, Tom, what if what if the woman is the wealthy one in this situation? What if their net worth is way higher? Generally, than they as we have read the statistics about that on the air, uh, no matter how much money women make, they generally marry guys who make more than they do, not less. I 
I guess the facts don't lie then, Tom. Damn straight they don't. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Rachel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, me and my boyfriend have been trying to think of... We want. We feel like we want to be with each other for you know forever. Um, since I met him, I, I got that gut feeling that like that was the person that I could definitely marry. Um, and I hadn't felt like that before with anybody else. And now, yeah, but you're only 24 years I old. I know, I know, I know. I was in a long relationship um, before him, so that's different. But. Um, and I don't, we aren't planning on getting married now or anything like that. How many relationships have you had? Relationships. Two. Two. So that's your vast experience. Yes. So, you had one before this one, and now you say, well, I've never felt that before. But you only had one other relationship. I understand that. So you really don't have the experience to, to judge. That's fair, Yeah. But my question to you, my question to you is, what is your opinion on what if we we want to have a ceremony, you know, like we would want to have a celebration, declare, you know, that we are committed to each other and all of that, but then without actually getting legally married? What's your opinion on that? Well, you can you can you can do that, but if you were the guy, I would remind the guy that he should see an attorney before he does that, yeah, I mean, no, because I agree. in some states. Doing that uh, would uh, possibly put you in jeopardy for paying alimony because you, uh, they would say, well, you gave the appearance of being married, so therefore you were married. Mm. So I, I wouldn't do that before consulting with a, an attorney, and you live here in California, I'd, that I would consult with a local attorney. Okay, that's interesting because, like, the money was, you know, I'm planning on making a good salary in my career. He has money, I have money, so, um, you know, I. Just as much as I want, wouldn't want him to have to lose his money and give it to me, I wouldn't want to do the same back. So we're pretty even on that. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, and uh, probably a good idea, if that's your plan, to one of you buy the house. Okay. And the other live in it. Okay, yeah. We definitely one of you buy the furniture. That. This is how I've done it in the past, by the way. When I was married, I owned the house. Mm-hmm. And the person I was with could live in the house for as long as we were together. And if we were together forever, well, then for that long. Okay. And by the way, it was set up so that if we did stay together forever and I died, she would then inherit the house at that time. Yeah, because I would want some sort of security, some sort of like, like what, what does it come to if you aren't legally married, but if he has a medical problem and I... Like, could I be power of attorney? Well, that or is, like these are questions for somebody? these are questions for an attorney. Uh, you want to go to an attorney that specializes in domestic law? Okay. And ask all these questions. All right, thanks, Tom. All right, Rachel. Good I've been luck. For years and years, and I love your show. Thanks. Why? Thank you, Judy. On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. This, this is regarding uh, the conversation I was hearing with Tim. Wanting to get married at 22. Right. And, and all the negativity that he got back. Well, me and my husband got married when we were 17. And we had a lot of hardships and everything. And we lived together and we, we struggled and everything else. And we've been married 45 years. Yes, dear. But uh, 45 years ago, things were very different than they are today. It was the time before text messaging and MySpace and Facebook and emails. It was the time before women would uh, uh, take uh, digital pictures of their, put it up on the Internet. I mean, th th this is a different time now. It's a different time, but it's And that is why marriages don't last as long as they did 45 years ago. Yeah, but it's still if there's that open communication well, that that, love that, and that, that respect. But, but, you, but you have no way of knowing if the other person feels that as much as you do. Then why is he still with me? We're not talking about you, dear. We're talking about people getting married in the 21st century. Oh, but I still believe even if these people are young... If they feel the love, they have the respect. Well, I know you believe that, but that's because you were born a long time ago. Times have changed. Believe me.
Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.